If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Please also consider supporting us on Patreon. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we bring you the inside tips on making great digital films and videos. I want to show you guys a little something I've been working on that's super easy to do. If you're not familiar with using VST plugins in Premiere, well, here's the place where you can get your feet wet a little in the wonderful world of VST plugins for Premiere. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to create <clears throat> a robot voice because this is something that you may need in your future endeavors as a, as a video audio professional. <clears throat> Okay, I just made that sentence up, but it's just creating a robot voice. So let's try it out. Let's take a look at this. All right, so I'm in Premiere right now and uh, I brought in, I needed an example. So I brought in Courtney, who does our, she does our little CTA at the beginning of a show, which is. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Okay, of course, please subscribe and click the little bell. Um, but I'm just going to use this because it's a nice bit of clean audio to start with. So first thing you want to do is you want to, you want to start with a little bit of clean audio. Uh, make sure that when you record your audio, you're in a nice room. I have a room that has padding on the walls and it keeps the reflections down. Uh, get the person nice and close to the mic, maybe six inches away from the mic would be perfect or yourself away from the mic. So it, it gets rid of all the outside noise. Now that's not going to be huge in this since we're going to be doing some processing later. But it's always best to start off with a good audio source. Now, now that we got a little audio source, we recorded it in here. Um, what I usually do is when I'm doing audio work like this, when I need to do effects, I'm usually going to go into audition and then start to create my effects and everything. And that's what I did here. I went into Adobe Audition and I created the effect. But the nice thing about Audition and Premiere is that they share the same pool of plugins. So the plugins that I used in Audition I can use in Premiere. So now I have the recipe to create this sound. And one thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to download a plugin that is as a voice changing plugin. It's like a plugin for changing your voice into like a chipmunk voice or a murder house voice, whichever one you want to see it. Now there are a couple available and I'm going to show you guys uh, two. The first one that's available that I recommend are the Re Reaper plugins. I think they call them Replugs. Um, I'll show link in the description and we'll also show them. Reaper plugins are terrific. They are free. These are VST plugins. VST plugins. That stands for Virtual Studio Technology. And it's just a way for uh, developers to create audio effects and processing that can be used across different different platforms. So like I said, Audition is using them, but so is Premiere. And then so can other things like OBS or, or, or what have you. Reaper plugins, go get those. Now those are specifically for Windows and you want to download the Windows versions and install those. I'm going to be using something called um, Grailion. Grailion? Grailly, Grailon, I don't know. It's by a company by Auburn and it's, they're free. Um, it's a free plugin that you can download, Grailon 2, and it's a voice changing plugin. Although I would not recommend using this plugin outside of this, your mileage may vary. I've had that plugin crash OBS. So if you're going to be using OBS, don't use this plugin. Use the Reaper plugins. If you can, if if you can, if you're doing everything on Windows, use a Reaper. Um, if you're doing some stuff on Mac and you want to do this particular example, the Graylon 2 plugin works just fine. I've tested it. Anyway, get that plugin installed. You're gonna have a you're gonna download it, you're gonna get a package file, you're gonna double click it and install the VST2 or VST3 plugins. Once that's on your system and you load Premiere they're not just gonna magically show up and I'll show you what I mean. So we're in Premiere Pro right now and I'm actually in my audio workspace. As you can see, I'm here, I've, 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 um, I've loaded my audio workspace and then I've hit reset to save layout so that it looks just like yours. So if you want to follow along with me, just do that. Otherwise the workspace just means it's a different set of windows that 
uh, Adobe sets up for you that will uh, will help you in that workflow. So we're in audio workspace. All right. If I've just installed the plugin, okay, after I've installed the package and everything, I got to go up into uh, the preferences and go to audio. And under audio, you will see this button right here, audio plugin manager. All right. So I'm going to have to click that button. All right. And it will list the current uh, VST plugins that you have, whether they're uh, AU plugins, VST3, VST2. Um, it only lists the current ones. You have to click on scan for plugins. Okay. And that will run a scan on your system to see what new plugins have showed up. Once it's once it's scanned, you should see, you should see, I have it right here. I have two of them actually. Grail, Grailion, Grailion? Two VST plugin and it's working, it's ready to go. All right, that's how you know that it's available there. I'm gonna hit okay and hit okay. Now you're ready to use a plugin. So remember, whenever you install VST plugins in Premiere or in Audition, you have to scan the system and tell the application that the plugins exist. All right. All right, now let's take a look. We have this. If you like this video. Okay, great. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my audio track mixer because I'm the kind of person who likes to apply effects on a track, not just on a specific clip. There are times when you do wanna maybe apply effect to a clip. Um, in this case, I'm gonna do, apply them to tracks so I can show you what I'm doing here. Here's the audio track mixer right here. And I'm gonna hit this little button here, which is the show hide effects and sends panel. And now I can fill up this panel with effects. And the first effect I'm gonna go for is in my uh, VSTs, where is it? Oh, there it is, in my AU selection right here. Grailion, 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 I hate that name, Grailion too. <laughs> So we're going to throw that effect in there. All right. And if I, if I, if I double click it, that brings up this interface here. All right. So this interface is pretty cool. I won't go too deep into it, but basically this guy right here, the pitch shift, that's what you want to, uh, you want to go for. So, uh, just before we do that here, let me back out. And, uh, here's something that I like to do. If I'm going to be editing this clip, Instead of hitting, if you like this video, please subscribe. Spacebar and then dragging the back, if hitting like spacebar, dragging it back. I'm going to create a loop. Okay, so if I just go to the beginning of the, you know, the the clip, hit I for in, and then go to the end of a section of the clip and hit oh, I've created an in and out point on the on the uh, the timeline, and now if we go to uh, this panel here, which is in our program panel, uh, I would like it to play in a loop. And notice I have a loop playback button here. Now, if you don't have that loop playback button, click this plus key here, go to the button editor, find the loop playback button, which is, where's the loop playback button? There it is, loop playback right there. And you would, you would drag this to your menu bar. So you would click and hold and drag this to your menu bar. Say, okay. Now notice there's a lot of neat buttons here you can play with. Some are for closed captionings. This is for safe. Oh, a safe margins button. I did not know that button existed. I will be adding that. That's cool. But there are a lot of neat buttons here that you can add for convenience. Now I have safe margins on and off. I didn't know that was there. Woo. All right, so I'm going to turn this loop playback button on. Notice it's toggled on. And now when I play, it will loop. This video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. If you like this video. So now I can work on the audio. It will loop and loop until I lose my effing mind. If you like this but that's okay. That's what I want. Subscribe. All right, so let's go into, let's double click on this, on our Grayleon. Now here's how it works. It's really simple to make that robot voice. First, I want the natural voice, the the dry signal, what's called the dry signal, to play. But then I want the wet signal, which is the processed voice, to also play at the same time and be a different pitch. So if we just play right now, subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. It's actually playing one 
one voice because this comes defaulted as like almost negative seven. If I do it, this is around negative five pitch, right? I can pitch it up. Watch what happens when we play it and do it. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. So, so let's make it, let's, let's make it a little, let's make it like minus seven, somewhere around there and press play. If you like this video, please subscribe. All right, that's cool. So already we've got like the kind of this robot -y thing going on, all right? There are a lot of other settings you can play around with in here. There's the lead voice, there's the cut, there's the, um, there's smoothness things, there's correction things, a lot of neat things in uh, here. This is this is the dry versus the wet mix. So this will allow me to bump it up plus six or minus. So if we play with this. Click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. That's only like the robot video, voice. Please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. If you like this video. And that's mostly the dry voice. So you can play around with this setting here. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. Please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. That's cool. So that combination of pitch versus how much of the dry versus the wet comes out, you can tune it up and play around with it and you can get a nice little little, uh, little robot voice happening. Now, this video, please subscribe. Okay, we're not done yet. So we wanna add a little polish, little, little, little other things, some other things. Uh, one of the things I would do want to add is um, single band compressor, a compressor, because I want to I want the voice to sound. I want to reduce the dynamic range of the voice so it sounds more like a robot. So let's go up here, right, into our effect selection. We're going to go to amplitude and compression. We're going to add a single band compressor. All right, we double click on that guy, and we bring up our single band compressor. I'm going to do something really super harsh, vocal attacker. I'm just gonna use a preset. We're just using presets, okay? Vocal attacker will give me a 21 to one ratio of the voice. Now that's gonna be pretty compressed, meaning the lows are gonna be very, the lows and the high, the sorry, the, the, the low volumes and the high volumes are gonna be crunched into this little window, okay? And that should be good enough for me to come out with something that sounds like this. If you like this video, Please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Notice how the volume stays consistent within this range here. If you like this video, please subscribe. Okay, so that adds a little more robot-y voice. Let's let's add a little more robot-y things and let's add a parametric equal as e parametric equalization. I can't talk today. So we go up here and we go to filter and EQ. And we're gonna add a parametric equalizer. All right, and once again, I'm adding a lot of these plugins because they have presets that you can play with. Feel free to play around with this uh, in your own time, all right? We're in the parametric EQ. And to start off, I'm gonna choose just Vocal Enhancer. Vocal Enhancer, what it does is it kind of cuts the lows and it sweetens the highs. Um, and this, this will depend on the input signal that you gave it. This will depend, that what you use here really depends on what you gave the system. So if you gave the system, you know, if your clip has a lot, very high syllabants, you might not want to go up so high. Uh, in my case, I think this will work. And click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Okay, yeah, it kind of smooths it out. Uh, if I used rap vocals, that's going to be really harsh. If you like this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to go back to vocal enhancer. If you like this video. Now, uh, one thing I do want to mention also is that the order of these plugins matter. I'm kind of just throwing them in willy nilly, but the order does matter. So if you find, um, I, I may want the compressor to be last in the chain, okay? So that it compresses everything that's coming in, but just take note, they do matter, the order do does matter, okay? And finally, I'm gonna add a little analog delay, okay? So let's add a little analog delay here. So let's go into, uh, delay and echo and analog delay. And this one you can play around with also. I'm gonna double click. We're gonna use a preset and there's a lot of neat things. And there's actually one called robot voice. I don't recommend it, but you can grab it first and then tune it so that it'll sound like this. Please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. Yeah, that's not working for me. That's not working too much for me. I want like a slight little bit of a delay. Um, Let's try, 
Let's try public X, public address. If you like this video, please subscribe. Now, what I can do is I kind of like that, but I want the delay to be closer to the, the delay being the wet signal to be closer to the dry signal. Um, so I'm going to, uh, let's reduce here. Let's zoom in. Let's reduce the delay time, 149 milliseconds. Let's make it, let's make it 50. And click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. I love it. I love it. Notice how when I decrease the delay, the wet signal, which was the delay, not an echo, an echo is a continuous repeat. A delay is just once. Um, it moved it closer to the dry level, which made it a little eh, like this. If this video, please subscribe and click that little bell for notifications when we release a new video. And that's about it. Um, a lot of concepts I touched on in this video, but you can play around with a lot of effects on here. You can add some reverb. You can add maybe another uh, voice changer to make a low one, a middle one, and a high one. This is this is the start of the recipe for making cool effects, not just robot voices, but uh, you know bird voices and this and that and whatever. So hopefully that was fun. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out pullmyfocus.tv for our companion articles that go along with these videos. If you have a question about uh, anything that we do on any of our videos, just post it in the comments below. You'll see me in the next video. Because if I say I'll see you in the next video, I'm actually not seeing you. You're seeing me. So make sure YouTubers change that around because it's weird. I'll see you in the next one. I'm not seeing you. You're seeing, you'll see me. All right, never mind.